Hi there, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Ed Codes. And this is just going to be a brief episode. I'm not going to be going through any code line by line, but I did want to show you so far what tools are available that I've described in the last two or three videos. You should be able to come up with something like this. And if, and if you haven't thought of it, here's an idea. So I want to open a program that I made that was kind of testing a concept. So earlier I did, uh, let me see, where is it? Might be this one here. So in an earlier episode, I made water waves. And then I wanted to make an object that floats on those waves. And that's what I did in a previous video. I'll show you that example here, if you haven't seen that. Is it Bobber? No, Waves Mod. Yeah, Waves Module. This is the program that I made that has the object floating on the waves. So we've, I've made water waves, I've made an object that will float on those waves. So now I kind of want to play around with that a little bit. So I thought of having a person floating in the water, and if you're in the sea, they're sharks. And so I wanted to kind of play around with that. So the first thing I did was I started a new sketch where I tried to figure out how to make a shark fin and get that fin to float back and forth. So that's what I have here. I created the fin using uh, begin shape and end shape and in between that I created uh, the shapes using curved vertex and it was just a process of experimenting with what values I needed to get a good fin shape and I think I got a good one here. When I first wrote the program I was just like okay let's make a fin and let's have it move one direction. And then after I did that, I was like, well, I need the fin to move the other direction. Well, since I had the code created already, it wasn't a process of just flipping these numbers. See, there's positive and negative numbers. All I have to do is just flip those. So whatever is on the negative side, now it's on the positive side. And that'll make the fin go. So really what I could, do, could have done is had these basic units here and then multiplied them times, a neg times negative 1 to get the positive or negative numbers I needed. To show the fin going left to right. But I didn't do that because you know what was so much easier? Just copying this and <laughs> pasting it down here and then setting it to a condition that if it's going one way it prints this, if it's going the other way it prints that. So much easier. Probably not the best way to do it. Like I said, you want, you want to do it with the least amount of code and you want it to be versatile and robust. And this really isn't versatile or robust. If I change this, I've got to change this. And that's a big pain. So just a little heads up if you're coding uh, to try to keep and think about, think ahead so you can set yourself up for success. So in spite of that, I've got this fin moving back and forth and I wanted to add it to the water with a, a character. So I needed to make the character. I think I've got that here in this program. So here's my character, Bob, and you can see the shark fin is floating around Bob. I'm <laughs> checking him out, seeing how delicious he is. And if I go down here to my water wave and change the opacity, the alpha, lower that alpha, you can see through the water now, and you can see where my shark fin is. Now the shark fin does come up, it, it moves up and down. But I have to be careful because sometimes the waves will drop below where the shark fin is and then you can see that it's just a, a fin. So I, I gotta measure that carefully. And it moves back and forth and I have the movement set um, to the width of the screen by Perlin noise. So the shark's gonna center, be a, kind of around the center mostly. And then I have my character kicked off to the side. And I did that because I didn't want the shark fin to constantly be around the character. I want it to be away a little bit so that it could kind of roll up on the guy. And you can see he rotates back and forth. Now this guy, and I'm going to go down to Bobber here, you can see he's just all fixed. I can't really make him bigger or smaller. If I do, then lines are going to be out of proportion. So his arm will be real skinny and this long. Or if he's really tiny, his arms are going to be so big you can't even see where he's at. So one of the ways that I can fix that, and I'll show you that here in this program, is 
So I created this jumper and he's all of the little units. So whatever size he is, which is this dot R, then I'm just multiplying that unit times the smallest numbers, the like the smallest multiples of whatever size this character is. So I might use the head as a un one unit, and then the body might be two and a half head widths. So then I multiply that body length times whatever the head is. So I'm basically everything is sized to the head. So this dot R represents the head, and then everything else is kind of factored to it. And then if I change this dot R, the arms are going to be in proportion as it gets bigger, the body's going to be in proportion, everything's going to be proportional like as if it was a vector. So let's take a look at it. Now it, since he looked kind of like a skydiver falling down, I just created a real quick animation of a bullseye that he's trying to land on. Just as a, a concept of how I can get this thing to what it looks like when you increase the scale or decrease the scale. So my character's falling and his size, his scale, is Perlin noise. So that's a Z, Z value in Perlin noise. And then he's moving back and forth, up and down by Perlin noise. So I have three dimensional Perlin noise here controlling how he's moving. And then when he gets to a certain level, he stops moving and his scale diminishes until it reaches a certain point and then it restarts again. So the great thing about this is I can put that character in a program where I have paratroopers. So let me see if I can find that here. So here I'm kind of working on, that's the same character, just uh, adjusted ever so slightly. And it's just scaled down. So now I have this character that I can scale up or scale down and put it in video games. So of course that should look a little different. It should look uh, like this. There's my little paratroopers and then they fall in the water. That's the advanced one. So I kind of thought about having something in the background like skyscrapers. So then I was working on those objects, and I may show you this later on once I get it perfected, but right now it's kind of janky. I'll show it to you anyway. Because you can see the potential in this program here. Here's my skyline, my randomly generated skyscrapers of different colors. Lights are on differently. One of the things I'm working on is having the lights be able to turn on or off by a certain time of the day. So when it gets night, the lights are going to turn on to a certain time and then they'll kind of slowly shut off over time. So it looks like a real skyline. But right now you can see it's it's got some issues. If I just generated a skyline with static lights on, this would be a great program for that. So I think that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you what I've been working on in terms of classic arcade graphics so eventually I can put together a cool game. And if you guys are following along, and I hopefully you are, then you're going you're gonna to be given the modules and the tools to be able to do your own things. And uh, we'll see what we can come up with. That's the plan. So I guess uh, until next time, as always, thanks for watching and take care.